We're excited to take a moment and tell you about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare provides access to thousands of classes made by creators, teachers, and professionals with topics ranging from web development to fine art to video, photography, freelance, and much more. Unlike other services, Skillshare membership offers you to take as many courses as you want. One particular favorite of ours is a course called Productivity Masterclass by Thomas Frank. In this day and age, we definitely need some advice to manage all of our projects. We would definitely recommend you check it out as it will certainly help you improve your productivity and create your own custom solution to keep it where you want it. So if you're ready to start learning more about how to keep yourself productive or eager to learn basically anything, here's your chance. The first thousand people to use the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership, and after that it's only around $10 a month. Thanks again to today's sponsor Skillshare, and now let's get back to the video. Hey there, fellows! We've got an interesting one in store for you today. By popular request. So a few episodes back, we made a transparent engine with a see-through valve cover. That allowed us to see the inner workings and the oil splashing around. It was pretty cool. And after that, we got so many new suggestions. It's my understanding that people are curious to see how a differential works, a rear axle. So what better reason for us to make a transparent cover, fill the diff with some oil, fire up the car, put it into gear and take a gander. I mean, who even knows how it's gonna behave? Hopefully that cover doesn't pop off. But I digress. We know what to do, it's all rather simple, and I am super curious. So let's make that transparent cover, put this whole thing together, and do some testing. Let's do this. Observing frozen oil underneath a transparent differential cover. Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. We've prepared the cover, it's looking very good. We did have to cut the edge slightly in order for it to be easier to get the right shape. We've also decided... You see, we're always having trouble with these bits, with the edges, given they're under a 90-degree angle. See how sharp these are? This means we need to drill some holes in order to get some vacuum happening, so that the plastic wraps itself onto this piece as tightly as possible. If we don't do that, we'll again run into a situation... It'll assume a 30 to 45-degree angle, not getting all the way to where we need it. So we def have to drill them holes, a bunch of them, so that it gets sucked on and this shape is covered nice and tight. Alright, fellas, take a look at that cover. We were able to make it the proper shape. The angles weren't bang on right after contact, though we did drill a bunch of holes on the original piece, but we immediately proceeded to heat everything up, and after that the plastic did wrap itself tightly around the thing, so everything's good. Then we drilled some holes in the plastic piece, and now it's all a matter of installing it, sealing it up, waiting for everything to dry, then we pour in the oil, and that's where the fun begins. Let's do this. Alright, fellas, we're good here. The cover is in place. Now we're gonna go ahead and pour in a liter of oil. Out of curiosity to see where the level gets up to. It's supposed to go up to here. That's where the plug used to be. So the oil level corresponds to where the plug is. Anyway, let's feed it one liter and see, shall we? See how much space one liter occupies in here. Okay, so after pouring in a liter, doesn't look like much. The gear is touching the oil, and so it is going to splash it around. Every component should get lubrication to some capacity, but we are meant to put in some more. So let's do just that. I mean, I'd happily leave it at one liter, but let's put in the proper amount. Okay, so we added some oil, and things have taken an interesting turn. 
Now, if we go all the way up to here, that's actually in excess of 2 liters, and the repair book says it's 1.65. As for us, well, we brought it up to here. So there's plenty of oil in there, the planetary gear is lubricated, and quite sufficiently. It's dipped in there pretty deep, so we're not gonna put any more in there. We'll cover the filler hole, and it's time to start the car and see what's up. We should get a very clear view of what spins and what splashes. Okay, so we're slowly rotating it. We've got oil going into the planetary gear. We can see it dripping inside the diff. Isn't that great? The satellites are all gonna get nice and slippery. See the oil dripping? And that's with us taking it slowly. I take it the axes are all good. Awesome. Even at low speed, it is nicely picking up that oil. Let go of the wheel. The satellite gears are spinning. Everything is lubricated. And that was us rotating it manually. Time to start the car. Put it in first. We doing this? First. Oh my, are things escalating. That's how it works, yum. Put it into second now. Look at how it's kicking the oil up. That's the oil doing its thing. It is actively picking that stuff up. As for the differential gears, apparently they're not meant to be splashed. Otherwise, if the oil freezes, there's no way you're getting it to move. I mean, if the planetary gear is capable of immobilizing the car. Okay, so in reverse, the oil is splashing the other way now. You can clearly see. And look at how the level dropped off. The thickness of that there... That isn't even an oil film. That's a stream of oil right there. It's quite substantial. Go ahead and put it into fourth. Why are the wheels spinning in different directions? Look at it go! That's fourth gear, with the engine literally turning it idle. Or maybe slightly higher than that. Oh wow, will you just look at that? It's even starting to foam up slightly. Yeah, you can see it's splashing it like crazy. It appears to be ricocheting off the cover. So it basically brings it up to here, and then it drips down or... Give it some gas, William. Oh my goodness. Isn't that something? Oh wow. Everything is covered in oil. Like all of the gears, man. It's all smothered in oil. And as we know, oil does serve to cool everything down. It's like when you're driving behind a car such as a gazelle, where you can clearly see that the axle housing is covered in frost, while the diff itself is bone dry. You can clearly see how everything is spinning in there. We were stopping each wheel and seeing the corresponding axle shafts also stop. Nice. Now it's time we take this outside. 
So here's the situation, fellows. We have brought the car outside. Everything is good and well. It's been out here for a couple of days. The reason being that we were hoping that the frosty weather would come back. But springtime is upon us, which means these days we've been seeing zero to minus two centigrade, so the oil ain't really gonna freeze. Well, I mean, okay, we did see minus 12 this morning, it's minus 10 outside right now, but I'm pretty sure we won't see any extreme cold temperatures. But we most definitely need to see how the oil behaves. I mean, it's still pretty cold outside, so that oil has to have gotten at least a bit thicker. Given we're running regular mineral and not synthetic oil, if it were minus 27 to 30, then yeah, it would have been rock solid. Now? I'm guessing it's just slightly frozen. In any case, let's have a look and see how slightly frozen oil behaves. Let's do this. Well, yeah. It's quite obvious that the oil is slightly frozen. But even when Sergei is slowly rotating that wheel, it's still getting up there. This tells us that... Yeah, it has become somewhat thicker. Yeah, that gear is actively picking it up. I can see the planetary gear covered in a thick layer, as if it weren't even oil, but rather sour cream. Yep, it is frozen. Okay, let's fire up the engine. Holy cow! Look at it go! Get it into a higher gear. That mineral oil has definitely thickened. For sure. Quite noticeably. Look at how it's hesitating to flow. Still though, you can see it getting all whipped, and how it's foaming. So that thing basically works like a blender and infuses the oil with some air. And you've got plenty of oil making its way up. It's getting plenty of coverage. See, the whole thing is lubricated. But if you look closely, the bearings aren't getting as much. They definitely need more than they're receiving. When the oil was liquefied, a lot more of it was splashing onto the bearings. Let's see what happens in fourth gear. Okay, so now it's getting splashed around. Like chunks of it are flying around. And it's slow to drip back down. Yeah, it's frozen. You can see chunks of it falling down. Oh my. So that's how transmission oil behaves in the rear diff. The one on the right... So the left bearing is receiving some oil, while the one on the right is dry. How did that happen? So there you have it. And another thing, fellas. It's been running for about five minutes. And look at what's happening. So the diff isn't under too much load. It's doing its thing. The oil is splashing all around. You've got friction, the bearings are working, the teeth are doing something, everything is getting warm. And here's the picture. The oil is getting increasingly runnier. And no longer do we have it splashing around in chunks. It's dripping just like it's meant to now. It was quite a curious thing to observe the behavior of that differential oil. I mean, these sorts of things... It's just a transparent cover, right? But when you see what's inside... Honestly, it is quite a cool thing to look at. So when we started the car in the warmth of our shed... You would have seen the oil splashing all over the diff. Everything was lubricated nicely. Then we parked the car outside, and like I said before, the extreme cold temperatures we experienced earlier are long gone. We aren't even seeing minus 20. Right now it's minus 10 degrees Celsius, or maybe a bit lower, like minus 11. Still though, the mineral oil did get pretty thick out here. So as you would have just seen, it wasn't splashing any further than the planetary gear. So that was getting some lubrication, so was the ring gear. But the most unpleasant part was that the right side axle shaft bearing... I mean carrier, then again whatever, call it what you want. 
The point is that it wasn't getting any oil for whatever reason. You would have seen it flying around in chunks in there. It's like somebody was scooping up spoonfuls of it and chucking it like sour cream. But after it ran for about five minutes, the oil got up to temp and started to behave like oil should. So there you have it, fellows. Send us your suggestions on what other see-through stuff we can make to see what's on the other side. And observe all sorts of interesting processes. But for now, that's all I have for you. You saw it all for yourselves. Subscribe, comment, send in your suggestions. Give us a big thumbs up. Oh yeah, just a quick reminder that Garage 54 merch is finally on sale. We're always cooking up some new stuff. There is gonna be a link in the description, so why don't you go ahead and check it out. We've got a ton of cool souvenirs, even personalized mugs. So head on over. All the links are gonna be in the description down below. Go ahead and grab something.